Grass Sandals, The Travels of Basho by Deneen Spivak, illustrated by Demi. Grass Sandals. For Sam Yamashita, who gave me the gift of Japanese literature, for my 16-year-old daughter, Asha, who said, Mom, nothing happens in this book, which is what Westerners say about Japanese writing. Traditionally, poems in the form called haiku are characterized by 17 syllables broken into three lines with five, seven, and five syllables respectively. Each haiku includes language that appeals to two of the five senses, sight, hearing, smell, touch, and taste, or the additional sense of movement. Grass Sandals there were old men of China who made themselves nests in trees and lived in the branches. But let me tell you the story of Basho, who lived in Japan and walked all over his island country writing poems. 300 years ago, he lived in a small house next to a river. A friend gave him a Basho, or a banana tree. He planted it near his house and liked his tree with ragged leaves so much that he changed his name to Basho. Basho would sit in the doorway of his small house, sit with his breakfast bowl, look out at the river and the mountains, and pour his tea in the company of morning glories. But one spring day, Basho felt restless and decided to travel. He decided to walk across Japan. He didn't need much. A rain hat made of tree bark, a raincoat made of thick grass to protect his black robe. He prepared for his journey by sewing his torn pants and stitching a string on his hat so that it wouldn't fly off in the wind. To his hat, he said, hat, I will soon show you cherry blossoms. And he scribbled on his hat, soon, cherry blossoms. Basho closed his small house and walked to the river. Basho began his journey on a boat and many of his friends kept him company for a few miles on the river. His friends brought him presents for his trip, a paper coat to keep off chills, writing paper, an ink stone, and for his feet on their long walk, woven grass sandals. So little was needed for simple traveling. He carried it all with him tied up in a cloth. When they had crossed the river, Basho climbed out of the boat and waved to his friends. On the shore was a waterfall. He ducked into the cave behind the streaming water and laughed as it sprinkled his face. In his grass sandals and black robe, Basho walked and walked, looking like a black crow, he thought. Near an old temple, he found a twin pine tree 1,000 years old. Basho sat and wrote a poem to this ancient twisted tree. Picking up his pack and climbing the winding pass, he was surprised by satiny red bark in a spring orchard, and to these trees, too, he chanted a poem. For finally he had kept his promise to his hat. He walked beneath the cherry trees in blossom and under the flowering branches met an old friend whose hair was as white as petals. At night, he often rested his head on grass pillows. Sometimes he slept on flowers in huts or in paper rooms. Sometimes he rested in a horse stall or in a bed where fleas nipped him. He slept in fishing villages and smelled the fishy smells. Basho took his bath in hot springs, splashed in cold streams, and swam in the sea. He ate whatever he found or was given along the way. A farmer gave him a cucumber or a radish. An old woman invited him to share her noodles. Some days he made a fire pit, put water in a pot, and cooked rice and beans for supper. Then he rolled the leftovers into rice balls to eat the next day as he journeyed. Once, a trusting farmer lent him a horse to ride across a wide, grassy field. The wind blew on Basho's sun-tanned face as the horse trotted through the clover. 
When he heard a grasshopper or saw the horse eating flowers or spied a hawk circling, he took his inkbrush and wrote a quick poem. Basho sent the horse back to the farmer with the poem and a pouch tied to the saddle. In a mountain village, Basho met friends and they had a party to watch the full moon. Drinking tea and rice wine, each could find a small moon reflected in the bottom of his cup. While clouds and stars and shadows lifted, they created poems together, sitting under the night sky. The next morning, as Basho was leaving, one friend gave him new grass sandals with laces dyed blue like the iris. Goodbye, my friend, and thank you. Thank you. Basho hugged his friend. Crisscrossing the blue ties of his sandals around his ankles, he set out again on his walk across his island country of Japan. His blue lace sandals carried him to distant beaches and fields and forest. Basho stopped to write a poem when he found a creature or person or plant that opened his eyes and his heart. He watched the fog curve over the hills. He noticed a cricket sleeping in a leaky hut. He smelled the rain. Each morning he tasted his tea. In the evening he heard a frog leap into a pond. And so 300 years ago he traveled and the world was his home. Places Basho visited and what Basho saw in Ido, Basho's house, Nikio, Waterfall, Iwanuma, Twin Pine Trees and Temple, Matsushima, Kisigata, Sea Coast, Fishing Villages, Mogami, Mogami River, Oishida, Friends Composing Poetry While Watching the Moon, Ryusha Kugi, Mountain Temple, Nara Temple, Yoshino, Cherry Orchards. Matsuo Basho, the haiku poet most loved and honored in his country, lived in 17th century Japan, 1644 to 1694. He wrote journals of his travels in Haibun, a diary of prose and poems. The places that he loved, the shrines and mountains and villages can still be visited and the poems remain as fresh as new leaves. The journey of grass sandals compresses and combines the event from several of Basho's travels. At the age of 50, Basho sold his small house in Idu and set out on his last journey. And that is what we'll be setting for the next two weeks. I hope you guys liked it. See you in class Monday.